Hi, this is Jack Dangerman, and I'd like to take a couple of minutes to share with you some of the work that's going on in the GIS community around the COVID-19 crisis. Before doing that, I want to first say thank you and acknowledge you for the amazing work, the hard work that many of you are putting in. Some of it's heroic, actually. I'm privileged to sit on sort of the front lines of very special projects that are happening. And so for the next few minutes, what I'd like to do is share with you some of that work to give you a sense of, 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 of what's occurring so that you might adopt it and adapt to uh, adapt it for your own organization uh, to make your organization better and also help the world in this time of, of crisis. I'll do this by sharing a series of slides. First, I'd like to just get this one point across. Around the world, around this country, around your regions, the GIS community is responding. It's collaborating and sharing approaches and models and apps and data in various ways, and I'm very proud of this. The pattern that is emerging is one of building an information system for pandemics. GIS support teams are standing these up, bringing different web services together, and supporting these applications of surveillance and planning and logistics operations, executive awareness and presentations of real-time awareness, situation awareness, and also engaging, increasingly engaging communities, but also collaborating agency to agency working together. The applications coming out of this are, are also very exciting. The most common one that you, I'm sure, are aware of is the dashboard and this application here at Johns Hopkins is probably the most popular of those, uh, showing billions of maps being made every day to tell the world what's going on in not exactly real time, but close enough. But this same pattern is being applied in, in WHO, World Health Organization, uh, by organizations like FEMA and the Red Cross, states, cities, hospitals, for example, La Melinda, are standing these up and, and using them extensively. Other applications involved the integration of predictive models like this one called CHIME, developed by the University of Pennsylvania, with mapping so that you can actually forecast the curve of the epidemic and then see it spatially and then al allocate these, these uh, forecasts to impacting, uh, to show how they impact various facilities or various geographies. Another set of applications involve understanding vulnerable populations, um, understanding them with business geographics, um, infographics, for example, integrated population profiles. And over on the right, you can see location and allocation modeling, allocating people to a site, but also supporting the idea of picking centers like targets such as treatment centers or temporary hospitals. And then finally, allocating resources to those centers in systematic and spatial ways. What's occurring is the development of enterprise GIS systems for pandemic response. And these are some examples of them. They're happening in FEMA, of course, as you would imagine and also many states and local governments. The US military has deployed it across the services and across the country in NORTHCOM. These bring together different kinds of relevant data, case data, movement data, like social movement data, facility data, population data, and they organize it as services to support various apps. Another way to say it is clear on this slide, it's organizing all the content and applications, bringing organizations and clusters of organizations together to enable more systematic and uniform decision-making and response. Now, those of you who know GIS know that this GIS provides a kind of framework and process for this, bringing all observations, measurements together, analyzing them in such a way that people can understand things and communicate about them, and then responding. And for COVID-19, these are the very specific things that are occurring. Measurements in health facilities and cases, 
communications through mapping forecasts and the impacts of forecasts on diseases, and then showing models that, that illustrate geographically intervention. The big intervention here is social distancing. And then doing analysis to test for testing site and treatment site selection. These are using classic location allocation tools and then allocating resources rationally. And finally, engaging the community through hub and related tools. Again, as most of you in the GIS community know, GIS can integrate virtually all types of data. And certainly in this case, integrating the tabular cases and population data are significant for people, bringing them together, showing them in a relationship to hospital resources and, and vulnerable populations. And then being able to integrate the outputs from these forecast models, so-called disease spread models, brought together in a format where its information is easily shared as services. And these services support powerful apps, not simply mapping apps, but exploration data apps, data science apps, tools to provide the situation awareness through dashboards. And as I've already said, analytics for showing disease spread and resource allocation are very popular in our community. Also, the app of Survey123 is providing flexible in-field or in-facility reporting mechanisms that bring across the web the latest reports for other people to see and share. The specific approaches that are, that are emerging look something like this. People map cases. They use these mapped cases or, or case data to help predict the spread, the forecast, these sort of curve, curve models like the CHIME model. And those are used to predict the impact on hospitals, show the capacity of hospitals and the impact of growth. And these are all about helping allocate resources. I mean, in other words, this chain of activities ends in this specialized kind of workflow and process. And the GIS apps that are sort of out of the box to support this are becoming prolific in our community. Again, speaking to the role that you as GIS professionals are doing, is helping, you're helping organizations understand and predict at many different scales. Modeling and analytics are kind of a central part of this uh, work, looking at patterns, modeling predictions, and then again, doing site selection. Again, all of these classic for GIS professionals. There is a requirement to build an information model, just like any other sort of GIS. These are the, the patterns of, of data models and information models that are emerging a set of layers connected to attributes, demographics, the cases, mobility data, which indicates social distance restrictions and the changes in human behavior that result as a result of this intervention. A summary of the actions that users are very consistently doing includes the development of a formal information model. This really means preparing all the data. And those of you in GIS who have been building the infrastructure, the geospatial infrastructure in your organizations already, already have many of these data sets ready, but there's new ones. And then analyzing the health and demographic data, understanding those communities that are really at risk. Uh, then modeling the spread, applying the the um, EPI model, as they're referred to, these curvilinear models, to show the, the spread. And then measuring social distance effectiveness. This really, again, means when a political leader says stay home, we can look a few days before they say that and a few days after they say that and see the effect. And a remarkable thing is occurring, by the way. People are consistently, regardless of of age or education or wealth or race, they're all staying home at a kind of in a kind of a uniform way. A fifth dimension is 
determining when and where hospitals reach capacity. And this is so critical because as the forecasts are made, being able to allocate resources to them is critical. Where can we move ventilators around, which is the last in this list? Identify optimal testing and treatment sizes, but also allocating resources to get to the right location at the right time. Well, uh, in this effort, ESRI is, has stood up the disaster response program for COVID-19, and we are making available our software freely, as well as virtual training and, and call on-call technical assistance to all of our users and non-users around the world to address this big issue. Our big job is to help you, our users, um, be the heroes that you are. And I so much appreciate your work because in mass, you have responded to respond in this, in, at this critical time. So I wanna thank you. I wanna thank for the partnership, the ongoing partnership that we have. I think this is such a testimony to the ability for our community to really come together and share and respond. Um, and I, I am frankly, personally overwhelmed by the goodness that you and our community is providing. And I want you to know that we will support you any way that we possibly can to bring an end to this dreadful, horrible disease. So thank you. And I look forward to seeing you in person one of these days again. Um, thanks. Thank you.